بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له تعظيما لشأنه وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الدائي إلى على رضوانه فصلاة الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال عز وجل بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله this week إن شاء الله we'll be starting our study of Surah Fatiha and before we get into it a few key things we really need to try understanding which is the value which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and Allah سبحانه وتعالى himself gives to this surah We'll start with a narration in which the Prophet shows us how much we need to value, study, and try and understand the Surah Fatiha. The narration is mentioned by Abu Sa'id ibn Mu'alla radiallahu anhu, where he says that I was praying in the masjid of the Prophet and then he called me and I did not reply. And when I didn't reply, the Prophet ﷺ, when he asked me about this, I said, I didn't reply because I was praying. The Prophet ﷺ said, that, Alam yakulillah, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasooli idha da'akum. That whenever Allah, the, whenever the Prophet ﷺ or Allah calls you, you must reply. And then after this, the Prophet ﷺ said that, before you leave the masjid, I will teach you the greatest surah of the Qur'an. And then he took hold of my hand to emphasize this. So then the Prophet ﷺ was then about to leave the masjid. So then before he left, I reminded him that. He said, you're going to teach me the greatest surah of the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ then said, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, He is sab'u al-mathani wa al-Qur'an al-Azim al-Ladi utito. So from this narration, the first main thing we must understand is that this incident took place in Medina. So after the hijrah, after all of the Makki life has passed, then this incident takes place. So as we know, Surah Fatiha was one of the first surahs to be revealed. In fact, Surah Fatiha was the first surah, complete surah to ever be revealed to the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Now, the ayah which the Prophet quotes, istajibu lillahi wa lirrasul, is also a Madani verse. This proves that this incident is a lot later than the Makkan life. Now, the reason that's important is because throughout the Makkah life, the Sahaba were praying and reciting the Surah Fatiha, and they all would have known what the Surah Fatiha is. However, the Prophet ﷺ, he specially comes up to this Sahabi and says, I'm going to teach you a special Surah. So therefore, stay behind. The best Surah of the Qur'an I'm going to teach you. It shows how much value the Prophet ﷺ had for this Surah, despite the fact he would have known the Surah. But he wanted to emphasize the value which this surah has in his eyes and the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how important this surah is. Many years he may have been reciting it for, but still he needs to be emphasized on him, the value of this surah. This is why for us, we can never really truly understand the value of surah Fatiha. Despite how much we may study it or try and understand it fully, in reality, we'll always need to be refreshing it again and again, just like the Sahaba had to refresh it years after originally having recited it for many years as well. And the Prophet ﷺ says that I will teach you a surah which is Adhamu suratin, the greatest surah in the whole Quran. This is how much this really should mean to us. That from all of the Quran, this is the greatest surah which the Prophet ﷺ said. Now, also, Sab'ul Mathani, this is the only surah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself refers to in another part of the Qur'an. Allah says, Sab'ul Mathani, and then in, by saying this, Allah is referring to Surah Fatiha. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa here, he indicates to us that this ayah of the Qur'an is referring to Surah Fatiha. So Allah describes Surah Fatiha within another part of the Qur'an to show us how important it is. In fact, we see from many of the hadith that come, that Allah himself sends angels or Allah himself will cure a person as a result of Surah Fatiha. So Allah makes many things happen for us to now emphasize and realize the value of Surah Fatiha. So this is the, obviously the narrations are many which we find. The Prophet the reason we go to is a hadith 
is because there's no better place to go for us to understand the value of any surah, for us to understand the Qur'an. The best place always will be the hadith of the Prophet So we'll start off with the, this is the first hadith which we've been through, in which the Prophet describes the surah Fatiha as the greatest, and its virtue is stressed. And really we realize that we ourselves cannot internalize the understanding. So no matter how many weeks we spend trying to understand Surah Fatiha, it really won't be enough. We should be continuously refreshing our understanding of Surah Fatiha. Then we have the second hadith. Now the Surah Fatiha has many names. Allah gives it one name, Sab'ul Mathani. Within the Quran, Allah gives it this name. And there's many other names which are given in the Sunnah. One name which is given is Shifa. And the reason for this is the second hadith, which we'll be mentioning, which is narrated by Abu Sayyid al-Khudr, where he says that they were all in a journey and they were all passing by a specific location where a tribe was living. And a person came from the tribe and said to them that our leader is ill. So, هَلْ مِنْكُمْ رَاقْ Do any of you do ruqya? Do any of you know how to heal this person? So then, Abu Sayyid al-Khudr, while narrating this hadith, he says that فَقَامَ مَعَهَا رَجُلٌ مَا كُنَّا نَعْبُهُهُ بِرُقْيَةٍ A person stood from us and we didn't consider him to be Iraq or Iraqi or know anything about this. But this person رَقَاهُ فَبَرَعَهُ He done Ruqya and the person was killed. So then we asked him that what was it? So then the people they gave him many prizes etc and a lot of reward. Then we asked him that what was it that you recited that made him cured? He said that I don't recite anything except I recite the Ummul Kitab. Now this is another name of the Fatiha we understand now. That he said Ummul Kitab and everybody understood he was referring to Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is another name, Ummul Kitab. So the, the lessons that we take from this hadith are, are many. But anyway, they said that, being the Sahaba, they said we're not going to take this from you. We're going to go back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They came back to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, narrated the incident. He said, "Wa kana anna How come he knew? He was impressed by the fact that he knew that this was also a ruqya, and also, as we know from other hadith, this is something which should be recited on things for shifa, and it will cure people from illnesses. So this is why the Sahaba gave them, gave it the name of shifa. And also, what we know is Sab al Mathani, which is given by Allah. And here we have Ummul Kitab, almost the essence of the book. And this is also the Prophet describes as Ummul Quran as well. You know, the mother of the book, Umm means mother. So when something is the mother, then it, it shows that this is in reality the origin. The mother is the origin of a child, the Fatiha is the origin of the Quran. The basis of the rest of the Quran will find it in Surah Fatiha. And the meanings of the rest of the Qur'an will find comprised within Surah Fatiha. And this is just how much the Sahaba would value Surah Fatiha. They'd call it Ummul Kitab without any question. And when somebody refers to it as Ummul Kitab, everybody recognizes it as the, as the Fatiha. So this is how much you know, value they had and how, how much the Fatiha really reflects the entirety of the Qur'an. And this tells us Many things as will come to. But in reality, by knowing it's the Ummul Kitab, it shows us that the Fatiha has, is something which one, once we internalize, we should be reading Fatiha into everything else. Fatiha becomes the lens and frames the way we think about the rest of the Quran. Because the Sahaba understood it to be the thing which comprises everything else of the Quran. And following on from this, we move on to the next hadith which is a hadith which is just so beautiful about the Surah Fatiha. And it's something where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he quotes Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, so it's a hadith al-Qudsi. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says that قال الله تعالى قسمت الصلاة Allah refers to Surah Fatiha as as-salah, the prayer itself. I have divided the prayer into two. However, the only thing actually referred to which is divided into two is Surah Al-Fatiha. So Allah refers to Surah Fatiha as the Salah. As in the Salah in, in entirety is Surah Fatiha. This is how much value Allah gives to Surah Fatiha. I have divided Salah into two between me and my slave. And whatever my slave asks for within Surah Fatiha, he will be given. So Allah says, Qal al-Ab, the slave says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And when the slave says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, 
Allah says that my slave has praised me. And then when he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah says the slave has Athna Ali Abdi. He has, again, praised me, associated something with me. He has associated mercy with me. And then, وَإِذَا قَالَ مَالِكِ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ مَجَّدَنِي أَبْدِي My slave has, he has, um, he has conveyed my, my majesty and declared my majesty towards me. And then, when my slave says, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ then in reality this is the part which is divided in two between me and my slave iyyaka na'bud is for me and my slave declares that he's going to worship me but when he says iyyaka nasta'in this is for my slave and he will be given whatever he is asked for allah promises the acceptance of this dua when the slave asks for help allah says i will definitely help him he will be given this help and then allah says the slave says ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim sirat al-ladina an'amta 'alayhim wa ghayru al-madhub 'alayhim wa ad-dallin this whole dua which the slave makes dua for guidance Allah says the slave will be given all of this which he asks for and this part is divided in uh, for the slave so the the value of this hadith firstly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Fatiha and then every time we say anything from the Fatiha Allah says it's almost Allah recognizes and acknowledges that my slave has praised me or my slave has declared my majesty. So it's the entire Fatiha, instead of just reciting it, it's not just something we recite and nothing happens. It's a conversation between ourselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every time we recite a verse, Allah acknowledges that my slave has recited this verse and he's praised me or he's declared my grandeur or he's asked me this. And if he's asking me this, I'm going to give it to him. This is how much Allah reverse the fatiha that every time we, re we recite it Allah will just will respond to every single verse after every single verse and on top of that we realize that Allah will accept that dua so whenever we make that dua for ihdina sirat al mustaqim for guidance to the straight path Allah promises that that dua will now be accepted and because of this no matter what reason we recite fatiha for even if it's solely for that dua being accepted, we can continuously spend the whole day reciting Surah Fatiha and we will have more benefit every single time. We can never recite the Surah Fatiha without benefiting ourselves. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes. Also, Sab'ul Mathani, going back to the word which Allah uses to describe Fatiha himself, Mathani can mean two things. One is often translated as Mathani, as in the highly praised one. But also, Mathani can also be translated as the often repeated. So why is it called Sab'ul Mathani? So obviously because Fatiha is regularly repeated, but Mathani comes from two. For example, if somebody folds something, it's also known as Than, as in the Than Yul Kitab is to fold a paper into two. Now, the Fatiha is always paired with something as well. For example, if we ever recite Salah, we have to pair Surah Fatiha with something else. We have to recite Surah Fatiha first, then another part of the Qur'an. Also emphasizing that Fatiha frames the rest of the Qur'an and the lens which we view the rest of the Qur'an should be Surah Fatiha. But here, in this hadith, we find brilliant pairing and balance as well. Allah says that this is divided into two and then we find the balance of three ayahs for Allah. Then the middle ayah is for Allah and the the slave himself, he, makes it, he gets the dua accepted. And the last three ayahs are all for the slave. Perfect balance within the surah. So Mathani reflects a lot of balance which we find in Surah Fatiha. And we'll go through the amount of balance and the extent of this balance and how we see the the manifestation of Sab'ul Mathani throughout Surah Fatiha in many, many different ways. And this is just a miracle of the Quran which we find here as well. So it also shows how much virtue the Fatiha has in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah describes it as the highly praised verses. Imagine how much value Allah has for this Surah Fatiha. This is the key message which we all need to try and internalize. This Fatiha is something very, very important. The last hadith, again, like I mentioned, Allah sent, sent an angel. This hadith is re related by Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu. قَالْ بَيْنَمَا جِبْرَيْلُ قَائِدٌ إِنْدَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ That Jibreel alayhi salam was sitting with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and then we heard a very loud sound from above. So Jibreel alayhi salam raised his head and said, Today, a special door from the 
uh, from the sky has been opened which has never been opened before and an angel has come and uh, this angel has never come to the earth before so the angel then came in and th then the angel said salam to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fasallam wa qal abshir bi nurain the angel came in said salam to the prophet and then said be happy with two lights which you've been given what are the two lights no one has been given these two lights before and the Asfatihatul al kitab or khawatim surat al baqarah one of them is the surah fatiha and the second one is the end verses of surah baqarah so a special this is so shows how unique these parts of the quran are a special angel comes a special door is open and comes and says to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam rejoice because you've been given something very very special and so much values again placed on the surah fatiha and obviously upon the last verses of surah baqarah as well so this is the value which Allah, again, Allah sending an angel and opening a special door shows how much value this surah has in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the surah being described as a light, I mean, for all of us to be guided, this is something which will help us. And at the end, لَن تَقْرَأْ بِحَرْفٍ مِّنْهُمَا إِلَّا أَوْتَيْتَهُ That no, nobody will ever recite a single letter from Surah Fatiha except he will be rewarded as a result of that. And special, unique, and only given to this nation is said that it's not given to anybody before us. So, these few hadith which you mentioned, the purpose of mentioning them was just to try and understand the true value of Surah Fatiha and how much value Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had for Surah Fatiha. I mean, this is something which we need to internalize because we're going to be studying it for hopefully a long time. So we realize how important it is for us to study it and how important, at least this is our starting point for the Qur'an. And then we view the rest of the Qur'an through, through the lens of Fatiha as well. Now moving on, as we finished Surah Fatiha, this is a very, very brief background. This is just for us to have some kind of idea of how much value Allah has for the Fatiha and the Prophet has for the Surah Fatiha. Moving on, as when we start reciting the Quran, the first thing we usually recite is "Aaudhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajim." Now we may wonder why we recite this. This is something we'll just briefly go through: why we recite "Aaudhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajim," what it is, and how we can recite it. So, this is known as istiada. So we have istiada, then we have the Basmala Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and then obviously we start Surah Fatiha. So "Aaudhu Billahi Min Ash-Shaytani Rajim." Now this is something which Allah mentions in the Quran. He says that Ida karat al Quran, whenever you recite the Quran, fasta it billahi min shaitani rajim. Then seek protection in Allah from the accursed shaitan. So this is a command of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So then now to understand this verse, how do we seek protection from Allah? We again go to the way the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam done this, and we find that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He would seek protection in three main ways. Three ways the Prophet ﷺ performed isti'adha, which we're going to call it now. The first way is the most common, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajim. This is almost a cut and paste from the Quran. Allah says, Ista'id Billah Minash Shaitani Rajim. The same words are there, same words here. Then the second way the Prophet ﷺ would use is, A'udhu Billahi Sami Al Alim Minash Shaitani Rajim. And the third word, is A'udhu Billahi Sami Al Alim Min Ash Shaitani Rajim Min Hamzihi Wa Nafkhihi Wa Nafdi. So we'll go through the translation of this. Is A'udhu Billahi Min Ash Shaitani Rajim. Generally, I seek protection from Shaitan Al Rajim. And the Sami Alim, which is added in, means the All Hearing and the All Knowing. And then at the end, Min Hamzihi from his poking. And Min Nafdihi. Min nafkhihi from his blowing and nafkhihi is a very strong type of blowing and also can refer to whispers. So, to translate the longest form, a'udhu as, and we'll just go slightly more into depth here, that a'udhu is translated as I seek protection, but it's a very special type of spiritual protection. It's not physical protection here. It's such a protection that can only be sought from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he even emphasized this kind of rijalum min al-insi awduna bi rijalim min al-jinn. That these people, when these certain men, when they done isti'adha from other jinnat, and this is looked down upon and something which was completely wrong for them to do, because isti'adha can only really be done from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, it's a worship in and of itself almost. So, isti'adha is translated as, I seek protection. 
But we have to be aware that this is a special protection which can only be taken from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a'udhu. Then billah in Allah. Minash shaitan. Now, what is shaitan? Shaitan is every single being, human or jinn, who leads people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, here it's relating specifically to the jinnat. Shaitan comes from shatana, which generally means to be far away. And people then explain that after shaitan we have ar-rajim, which means to be expelled. So people explain by nature shaitan is far away. And because of his actions, he then became expelled from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So shaitan and rajim, shaitan is to be far away. And it means shaitan, anybody, any evil entity from the jinns and or the humans. And ar-rajim is a description of shaitan. Then also we have the addition of a'udhu billahi as al alim. So we have sami, which means the all hearing. Now, why do we have all hearing? Is because the whispers of shaitan are things which we can never hear. However, you know, Allah will hear them, and Allah is the being who's going to be protecting us from them. And then alim, this shows our ikhlas that this is really a dua. We really are doing a dua here to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Him to protect us. And we know that He knows everything and He knows our sincerity and therefore based on our sincerity He will inshallah accept our dua and grant us protection from shaitan and the last three letters from Hamzihi Hamz the poking of shaitan and this is something which is very common we don't fully understand how he pokes but this is something shaitan does Min Nafkihi the blowing of shaitan and Min Nafthihi and this comes in Surah Nas in Nafathat and we see the blowing and the whispers of shaitan. All of these are the ways shaitan tries to attack insan. So we seek protection from this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why do we really do isti'adha before reciting the Qur'an? There's many reasons. However, we'll just go through the brief ones quickly. Um, one is almost like wudu for salah. That we purify our tongue from everything we said beforehand. So this way we are now, our tongue is now pure to recite the Qur'an. And obviously more importantly is that we're about to recite the Qur'an so we don't want shaitan to corrupt our understanding of the Qur'an. So we seek protection in Allah from shaitan. Also we show our humility to Allah that without the help of Allah we can't understand the Qur'an and shaitan will corrupt us. So we show humility that Allah is the all-powerful and He can guide us and He can help us understand the Qur'an. So we ask His help in understanding the Qur'an. And it also shows our intent that we actually do plan to take guidance from the Qur'an. We don't just read in the Qur'an for the sake of it. This is something which you really should realize as well, that whenever we read isti'adha, we're seeking protection from shaitan so that we don't understand it in a wrong way. So we do actually plan to understand it. So these are some key purposes which we read a'udhu the before reciting the Qur'an. And there's other benefits of isti'adha. As we know, shaitan has many tactics and many ways of coming to a human and deceiving him. So here we'll go through the main tactics of shaitan which he uses and how by reciting his other we'll, we'll be saved from those tactics. So number one, one of shaitan's main tricks is to deceive us by making us forget and overlook. So by reciting his other we'll be protected from this and overall our memory will increase. So this is one great benefit of reciting his other. Another thing it will make us energetic because shaitan, as we know, he has the power to make us lazy, sleepy and not be bothered to do things. So by reciting his ta'adha, it makes us more energetic and productive in doing these things. And also it makes us optimistic and ambitious. Shaitan has the ability to instill fear and make us scared to an extent which we're not really meant to be. And make things seem more scary than they really are. And make us basically more worried and more concerned and more anxious when we don't need to be. So by reciting us the other, we save ourselves from this and become more optimistic. And have a better outlook on life. And also, at the sweet form of shaitan, shaitan, he can make us procrastinate. So by saying us the other, we save ourselves from shaitan being able to make us lazy and delay things. So we become more active and productive because of this. And also, most importantly, it saves us from the evil whispers of shaitan. And just to finish off, when is it that isti'adha should be recited? Isti'adha should be recited basically whenever we can. With so many benefits, we should recite it at all of these times. Just for, just for the benefits that we can attain. But obviously, we recite it before we recite the Qur'an. We recite isti'adha before we enter the masjid. 
Because obviously when we enter the masjid, we realize that inside the masjid we're only going to be doing good. And shaitan's going to come and attack us very much there. Also, before we start salah, we again recite isti'adha so we can concentrate fully in our salah. Also, before we enter the toilet, we know there's a special isti'adha. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al khubuth. We say a'udhu, we take protection from Allah. If we don't know the long du'a, we recite a'udhu billahi min al shaytan rajim before we enter the toilet. Because that's where they like to chill out. Also, whenever we are inclined to do evil, and because the whispers of shaitan are always coming to us, so that's why we should really try and make a point of reciting it regularly whenever we feel any kind of evil thought coming to us, we should try and recite this. So, this is the basic understanding of A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim, and it's a dua we recite, this is what we need to internalize. It's something which can benefit us throughout our lives, but we always recite it before we recite the Quran. So, this is why we should fully understand what it means and how it's important to us. So, Amigdu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly gives us the full understanding of the value of Surah Fatiha, how much time, and makes us realize how much time we should be giving to Surah Fatiha. And also gives us understanding of istiada and teach and allows us to seek protection from shaitan as much as we need to. So, every, anybody who's got any questions, you're welcome to ask. Also, we'll be giving out these um, handouts, inshallah. So, the brothers that want to take these home, inshallah, you can read through these just um, to show um, the, the front side um, is the one with Surah Fatiha on it, the background of Surah Fatiha. It comes through the names, the benefits of the names, and then the three ahadith which you went through. And on the back we've got isti'adha, and the how to perform it, the purpose, benefits, when to recite it, and then the individual analysis of the word. So inshallah, if you go through this, then we can remember these things and go through them properly. So make the one that gives us the ability to act upon what has been said. Okay.